Today, we are gonna take our woodworking to the next level by introducing ourselves to vacuum press veneering, which is gonna open up a lot of creative doors. And today's video is brought to us by Squarespace. I am super excited about the possibilities. I've been intimidated by the process and the equipment, but it turns out it's a walk in the park. In this video, we're gonna go over the basics and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to get into vacuum press veneering. So in the next video, we can take what we learned and get into some crazy advanced techniques and that is the stuff I am super excited about. But first things first, let's talk about the equipment. A lot of what I learned comes from this book, Vacuum Pressing Made Simple. I highly recommend you check this out. You can make your own bags, which we will talk about in the next video, and you can also buy them. This one is made by Row Rocket, which I got through Rockler. It is about two and a half wiener dogs long by one and a half wiener dogs wide. One of the things that I found intimidating about vacuum press veneering is I just assumed that you had to have a perfect vacuum seal on the bag, and it turns out you don't. It's okay if you have small air leaks because your vacuum pump is going to overpower those leaks. This is the vacuum pump that I'm using. This comes from Rockler. I've had this for a couple of years and I've used it with these vacuum pods here to hold my work down to my workbench. So a vacuum pump will get multiple uses in your shop. If a vacuum pump isn't in your budget right now, you can use a hand pump, which we will show later in the video. The thing that pushed me over the top to finally get into vacuum press veneering is it's nearly impossible to find walnut plywood right now. And I got this really cool piano restoration project coming up where I need some walnut plywood. So today we are going to make our own. This is a 1980 something electric piano. And when I say electric piano, I mean it's an actual piano with hammers and strings inside but it's made for the stage. This belongs to my buddy Clay. He's taken it across the country many times. We are going to walnutify it. I don't know if walnutify is a word, but it is now. That video is going to be awesome. I have not been this excited about a new technique in a long time. I've been talking about it on the podcast for the past couple of weeks. I've talked about it over on Patreon and I've showed progress pictures over on Discord. This is one of those things that's really gonna take my woodworking to the next level and I'm excited to share this with you. So the very first thing I'm going to do is cut the platen. That's gonna be the large board that goes inside the bag, which all my veneers are going to sit on. I'm going to use melamine for this because any glue squeeze out won't stick to it. I'm also gonna cut some grooves in there so the vacuum can pull air from all parts of the bag. This platen is something I can use over and over again. I think I'm gonna go 50 by 33 and if that's too big, I can cut it down. We rounded over all the edges so we don't have any sharp corners in the bag. That is gonna be a good size. So next I'm gonna go cut my plywood sheet that we're going to veneer a little oversized. That way we can come back and trim it to the exact size after the glue up. So I have the piece of plywood cut that I want to veneer. I need to make two calls, roughly the size of this, slightly bigger than this, so I can put the whole sandwich in there. And those calls will make sure along with the vacuum that it gets an equal amount of pressure on all sides. So again, I'm going to use melamine. I think I'm using quarter inch. You can use MDF. You just might want to wax it a little bit so glue doesn't stick to it. Next thing I need to do is cut my veneer. This is the Rockler 24 by 96 two ply walnut veneer. And the cool thing about this is on the back, it has another piece of veneer running the opposite direction like a piece of plywood, and that makes this super flexible without cracking. I'm going to cut my veneer slightly smaller than the width of my board. That way I can use this straight edge on the table saw later to clean everything up. I have this handy little, I had this handy little veneer saw. Lots of ways to cut veneer. I'm just using this really cheap and expensive veneer cutting saw. You're not supposed to saw with it. You just do nice clean little cuts like this. There we go. When you're veneering wood, plywood, MDF, you have to veneer both sides. If you don't veneer both sides, it's going to potato chip on you. Even if you use like a contact cement that is not moist, it will still banana on you or potato chip on you because moisture and humidity is going to enter and exit that board differently on each side. And it's just bad, it's gonna be bad news. You don't want bad news. So on the side that's not going to be seen, I'm going to veneer it with red oak. It is slightly cheaper than the walnut. And quite frankly, this is the perfect use for red oak. 
Some of you know how I feel about red oak. On that top call, I sanded down the corners just so I don't have any sharp edges. So we've got the top call. We've got the top piece of veneer. We have our substrates. We have our bottom piece of veneer, and then we have our bottom call. So it's time to glue this up. I am going to add glue to the substrate and not the veneers. If you add the glue to the veneers, it's gonna curl up on you and it's gonna be very difficult. I'm using the Tight Bond Cold Press for veneer glue. This is made just for this application. The purpose of this glue is it doesn't get pulled through the pores during the vacuum and doesn't bleed through your piece. I'm using double ply veneer, so I probably could just use regular old wood glue for this, but why not do it right? with the veneer cold press glue. I'm using melamine for the calls because glue won't stick to this. You could also use MDF and either wax it or put packaging tape on there. From Rockler, I got this little glue spreader right here that's going to make this process a lot easier. Once the glue hits the trough, clock is ticking. Oh yeah. All right, spreader, spreader is recommended. Definitely recommended. Speed this process up, you get a nice even coat. That is looking good. And now I can just do the other side. All right, we got glue on the other side of the plywood substrate. I'm gonna put this on the floor so I can step on it in a little bit. Put in our, our oak and our bottom call. That is looking, that is looking good. Now, to keep things from moving and sliding around in the bag, you can use tape or a little, a little brad, a little pin. The brad gun is not working, so you can also use tape. So now I can take the sandwich and put it in the sandwich bag. I am maxed out on the size here. So I got to angle it just a little bit. So this bag has this gummy like substance on here. This is reusable. So I pull off the protective paper and I'm just going to mush that down to create the seal. Pretend that this is a bottle of wine. I don't have any wine, but you get these little stoppers that go in there and then you get this pump and you can pump out the air on your wine to seal the bottle so you can drink it the next day. This is the exact same nipple. So I could take my wine pump on here and you could pump out all the air like this if you want to. So we are going to use the vacuum pump because that's gonna make life a lot easier. The bigger the vacuum pump, the quicker it's gonna draw all the air. I'm gonna make sure everything is lined up. That is looking good. And you know you got a really good vacuum when your little wrinkles, just you, you can't move them. So that can sit there for an hour to two hours. I'm gonna go two hours to be safe. I forgot to add this netting to the top here. As you can see, it's, it's nice and flat and it's gonna have a hard time sucking in all the air from underneath. So what I'm gonna do is put in this netting on top. <laughs> all right, we're gonna seal that back up, put that back on there, try this again. There we go. I feel much, much better about that. I have maxed out the capacity of this bag. 
I'll shut this off for a second. This pump is made to run continuously, so I can let this sit and just run for the next two hours. There are bigger pumps that you can get that are made just for this, and then once it reaches its desired pressure, it shuts itself off, and then once that pressure gets to a certain point, it'll kick back on. And that is great for things that you might want to veneer and let sit overnight. This is a little bit more budget-friendly and entry-level into the world of veneering. You could, you could use a little pump on here and do it manually. That's gonna take you quite a long time to get all that air out. And then you're gonna have to like sit with it the whole two hours every once in a while and just keep pumping air unless you got a really good perfect seal. So you've got multiple entry levels into the world of vacuum pressing. So you can do it by hand, a continuous running pump like this, or move up to the bigger one, whichever whichever you need. So while that is drying, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor and that is Squarespace. If you're an artist, a creator, maker, or a woodworker, you need a website in 2022. You can host a podcast, you can sell online, you can run a business, you can have a portfolio. If you can browse the internet, you can make a website with Squarespace. It is that easy. Easy. They've got 24 seven customer support and absolutely beautiful templates to get you started. I've been using Squarespace for a long time, way before they were a sponsor. And I used to be a professional web developer. And the reason that I chose Squarespace is I wanted to focus on the business and not spend hours every day working on my website. And Squarespace allows me to do that. So please visit squarespace.com. And when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I'll also have that link down below in the description. Thank you, Squarespace. It is time to pull this out of the vacuum bag and see how we did. It has been about an hour and a half, so I think we should be good. So let's take this out of the bag. The pump has been off for about five minutes and it is still airtight. So I must've got a really good seal on there. The seal is reusable. So once I open this up, I'll put that paper backing back on there and use that again. And then after a while, when it gets dirty and old, you can get new seals for these bags. It's a pretty, pretty cool system. So I'm gonna take this off and then, whew, that's a good seal. Before taking this out, I'm gonna put this paper backing back on to protect that. And there we go, we got walnut plywood perfectly flat, no bleed through at all. Let's get rid of some of this tape here. That is how you make your own walnut plywood. That's gonna come out real nice. I got a nice straight edge right there. I can run along my fence to get a nice straight edge there. Another useful thing is curved panels. Let's say you wanna make some doors that have a curved arc to the front of them. You could make your form, you could have your layers in there, you could use some bendy plywood and your veneers and stick that form in the bag and then stick your veneers on top of that, do the same thing, comes out and you have your curved doors.